This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today. Infamy has its day with a Queenstown traffic issue getting its comeuppance. With mobility and user ability on their sites, a Dunedin group needs your input. And their impact is still felt today, but are all their stories true? A new documentary aims to discover the truth. And a very good evening and welcome back. I'm Craig Story. A $1.36 million facelift is expected to start today on the infamous BP Roundabout in Queenstown. The roundabout should help with bottleneck traffic, which is currently causing delays as far as the Calderdale Falls Bridge, and now including Five Mile. This roundabout will soon look different, and the New Zealand Transport Agency hopes the new layout will get vehicles moving along. Hello, Mina Amso in Queenstown. This roundabout will be remodelled to including two traffic lanes heading towards the Queenstown Town Centre. The BP roundabout has long been a trouble spot for vehicles travelling to and from Queenstown CBD. But New Zealand's Transport Agency Project Manager Phil Dorset says the $1.36 million revamp is expected to improve traffic and reduce delays for vehicles heading in both directions. Oh, well, it, it's simply to um, get two circulating lanes around most of the roundabout. We will trim back the islands at on each leg so that there's a bit more room to have two circulating lanes and that will help increase the capacity of the roundabout. An NZTA traffic count shows about 23,000 vehicles a day enter the roundabout from the Queenstown Event Centre side alone. Downer contractors have been on site since yesterday and work is due to start today. Traffic delays may happen at peak times but Dorset said a temporary traffic management plan is being put in place for the current remodeling, expected to be completed March this year. Mina Amso, The South Today. The New Zealand Resident Doctors Association has confirmed that its members will be on strike from 7am tomorrow morning until 8am this coming Friday. This 73-hour strike affects 18 DHBs across the country and will impact the provision of healthcare services. The Southern DHB does have contingency plans in place. SDHB Interim Executive uh, Chris Fleming says hospitals are open during the strike period. There are 271 junior doctors employed by the Southern DHB and it is not yet known how many will participate in this strike. A Dunedin man with macular degeneration has started a petition calling on the government to establish a working party on pedestrian safety in New Zealand. Jack Rutherford is also a participant in a survey on the value of footpaths and the response from visually impaired members of the community has raised a few questions. Jack Rutherford has bad eyesight. That makes crossing the street particularly dangerous. I have actually um, nearly been hit by cars going sweeping across the crossing at speed, even though I am almost halfway across the crossing myself. Rutherford has the eye condition macular degeneration and knows better than most the value of footpaths. He took part in a road controlling authority survey by transportation researcher Bridget Burdett. There are some 200,000 of us in New Zealand and we are a growing group. And fundamentally, in terms of the present survey on pedestrians, we are seeking to find ways and means in which we can ensure that pedestrians are safe. Survey results so far show the value of well-maintained footpaths is underestimated. And that has prompted Rutherford to start a petition calling on the government to establish a working party on pedestrian safety. Pedestrian crossings that are clear, and in the correct place. And I think that's one of our most important uh, aspects, particularly out here at a place like Green Island where I live. And I don't want to concentrate just on Green Island, but 
And Green Island is a good example of where there is a great deal of traffic in, a, in an area in which in its CBD is a pedestrian area. Rutherford, who struggles to read, type and cook, points out more people are killed or injured as pedestrians than cyclists. Rutherford wants more consideration given to the way streets, crossings and bus stops are designed so pedestrians no longer feel they are taking their lives into their hands crossing the road. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. Too right, Jack. Helicopters are being used to help battle a fire in a stand of trees in South Otago this afternoon. A fire service spokesman said the trees near Kaitangata are between 6 and 8 metres tall and crews from Kaitangata, Belclutha and the Clutha Valley have been fighting the fire in Wangaroa Road since 1pm. A fire service spokesman says the size of the blaze was at this stage unknown. The stories are legendary, but are the tales of camaraderie true? A new documentary being made by the Toitu Otago Settlers Museum takes a closer look at the lives of Chinese gold miners, and it aims to faithfully depict their way of life in the 1880s. One culture stands on another's shoulders. At the same time, both cultures are lifted up. This street art is a symbol of a bond that's more than 150 years old. Artwork like this in Rattray Street, celebrating the relationship between Chinese and European Kiwis, can be found throughout the city. And that's a relationship that's being celebrated by the Toy Two Settlers Museum with a brand new film coming out later this month. Based on the historical book Windows on a Chinese Past by Dunedin historian Dr Jim Ning, the film examines the discrimination experienced by the Chinese in the 1880s. The new film aims to faithfully depict the lives of the Chinese settlers. The Chinese are the outstanding migrant group here in Tuatago, uh, outside of Europeans uh, in the 19th century. So telling their story is, just goes hand in hand with what we do, both at Toitu and the Dunedin Chinese Garden, and informing people of Firstly, their hardships, but also their story of forbearance and endurance. The new information about early settlement in Dunedin may shatter some long-held illusions. When the Chinese first arrived in 1865, they were protected by the government because of the labour shortage in the south. But that ended when provincial government was replaced by central government. The Chinese were first brought out here uh, because most of the gold miners had left because there was no easy pickings anymore. They'd gone to the west coast. So the Otago Provincial Council actually invited them here in 1865 and sure enough they came in great numbers and they were a real solution. But then there was a dramatic change in government. The provincial government uh, system was abolished and central government um, was under a lot of pressure because there was a Great Depression in the 1880s and the Chinese were an easy target, unfortunately. The film cost less than 500000 to make, and McKee hopes people will learn more about the generation of Chinese settlers who have called New Zealand home. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. Cool. Still to come on The South Today, a serious health concern brings a warning from the Otago Regional Council and the poet buns, Alex Gilks, and the partial fancies, one year on. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. We're a 25 Moro place at Dog with Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so that we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 4738252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. 
When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz Travelling this weekend? Think slow. Got the rallies coming to stay these holidays, but the lawn's looking a mess. Call the team at Ready Lawn, open right through Christmas and New Year. Yes, Sunny Chin. Neck, shoulder, back, sciatica, pain specialists, innovative tools specifically designed to contour your grooves of depletion and excess muscle buildup. Sunny Chin, it works. Southern Television takes pride in providing a wide range of programming. If you have concerns about our programming or feel that standards have been breached, please write to the address on screen within 20 working days of airing. Visit Broadcast Standards Authority website for more information on the complaints process. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Put your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garagor. Welcome back. A health warning has been issued after blue-green algae was found at Lake Waihola. The Otago Regional Council discovered high concentrations of the algae after carrying out sampling at the lake. Anyone who thinks they may have come into contact with the algae should phone Public Health South immediately. The waters of Lake Waihola are strictly out of bounds now to swimmers and dog owners. And you wouldn't want your pet, let alone your child, coming across this nasty algal intruder. Cyanobacteria is rapidly becoming a household word in Dunedin following reports of the algae at Lake Wahola. The ban couldn't come at a worse time for lake lovers and the Otago Regional Council is unclear how long it will take to fix the problem. Blooms like this, you know, they can uh, quite rapidly disappear and under certain conditions, um, but they can also persist for several weeks. It's not the first time the bacteria has made its presence felt at the lake, with its last appearance in 2013. That outbreak was contained, but now water users are again being told to stay away. Yeah, so there's so signs were put up on Wednesday, um, warning people basically not to swim, uh, not to go into the water and to avoid their animals, um, their pets going into the water, and that Though those signs will remain up as long as the bloom persists um, and people are asked not to, not to use the lake until such time as those signs are taken down. He says in some cases contact with the algae can be fatal. Cyanobacteria can be identified by cloudy discoloured water but is not always visible to the naked eye. But you will know if you've come across it. Symptoms include skin rashes, nausea, tummy aches, numbness and tingling of the mouth and fingers. Consumption of fish and shellfish from the area should be avoided. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. There was a strong demand for a small offering of animals available at the recent Gore ram sale. However, prices were down. A Perindale ram from the Henarua stud fetched the top price for the day of $7,800. Nicole Sharp has the story. Posing for photos. The top price Perindale ram and its vendors, Peter Christie and Julie Wilson of McNabb, and buyers Blair Smith of Omaru and Robert Gardine of Omakau. About 150 rams went through the selling arena at the Gore AMP showgrounds. Mostly Perindale, but also Romneys, Cheviots, Border Leicesters, and Coopworths from across the South Island. Callum McDonald, PGG Wrightson's livestock genetics rep, will be pretty happy because everything is sold. Obviously, best thing about today was the full clearance. Um, yeah, all, all the rams sold. Um, top price is 7.8, um, which was um, Peter Christie from Hinaroa, um, and that sold to New Haven Perindales in Omaru. Prices at the sale were down, Mr McDonald saying that was a result of the small size of the offering. 
The sale continues on Wednesday, where breeds being showcased include Texels, Suffolks, Pole Dorsets, South Suffolks and Dorset Downs. I'm Nicole Sharp for The South Today. An Invercargill teenager is on the way to becoming an internet sensation. Hannah Simpson has posted videos on social media platform Instagram of her riding a cow. The clips have gone viral with reposting of the video being shared more than 400,000 times. When life gives you lemons, learn to ride a cow as you would a horse. You may have seen this already, but it's the perfect example of taking what you've got and running with it. On her Swiss brown cow, Hannah Simpson can canter and do jumps. Hi, I'm Ruby Spink in Invercargill, where the videos were originally posted two weeks ago and have since gone viral, covered by many international news agencies. From all over the world, the UK, Canada, America, Brazil, Norway, Norway and um, Australia as well. Yeah. And with news agencies reposting her videos, the clips have been seen over 400,000 times. She says she never thought this hobby would garner so much attention. Simpson's brother dared her to start riding lilac about six and a half years ago. Um, I think it was a dare for my younger brother just to jump on and ride her, so that's what I did, just jumped on and rode her and she was fine with it, so I was like, oh, we could do this, just keep going. Lilac has always shown an interest in jumping from when she was a calf jumping over the gates. So Hannah started getting her to jump logs and it all went from there. Now Lilac can jump a metre high, but she doesn't always behave as Hannah wants. As the phrase goes, never work with children or animals. But cows aren't the only animals she's ridden. Um, I didn't actually ride a horse to about four years ago, and <laughs> that was the first time. I've ridden a lot of our other cows. I used to ride my goats when I was really little, <laughs> and the sheep, but we got told off for that, so we weren't allowed to do it. She and Lilac go around the farm and down to the river for swims at least once a week. Hannah says she's going to continue riding lilac as long as they both enjoy the adventures. I'm Ruby Spink for The South Today. Well done. After the break on The South Today, Lake Hayes A&P show is over a century old and gaining in popularity. And the weather for your region drops a clanger. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. Got the rallies coming to stay these holidays, but the lawn's looking a mess. Call the team at Ready Lawn over right through Christmas and New Year. Pregnant, need to talk, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. season we're proud to dress the region alex campbell menswear it fits traveling this weekend think slow yes sunny turn neck shoulder back Sciatica, pain specialists, innovative tools specifically designed to contour your grooves of depletion and excess muscle buildup. Sunny Chin, it works. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 4738252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. We're a 25 Moro place. At Dog with Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass produced sort of cheap things, we're taking our time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or they, or they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Put your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. 
Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garagor. Welcome back to the South today. Last year, musician Alex Gilks took on Scotland's most celebrated poet, 18th century literary icon, Robbie Burns. Gilks band The Partial Fancies entered the annual Robbie Rocks competition, and the complex musical arrangement was shot and recorded in just one take. Say that fortune grieves him while the star of hope she leaves him. Anyone listening in will be left in no doubt that Robbie was a rocker. Alex Gilks, who was a working father with three children, managed to find the time to take out the top prize in Toitu Settler Museum's Robbie Rocks competition last year with a group of friends. As the contest rolls around again, he discussed his winning rendition of A Fond Kiss with the band Partial Fancies. The recording part of it was quite smooth. The guys, the other three, were kind enough to um, kind enough to give up some time and come into my office and uh, take a, have a few takes, get it sounding okay. Um, and the competition was is nice in that you can just have this kind of um, live demo kind of thing, so that it doesn't have to be a polished sort of recording. The Fancies set their version of the poem as a round, complete with melodica, Casio tone keyboard and guitar. They recorded the complex arrangement in one take in Gilks' shared office in town. The rules stipulate videos must be shot in one take. Conveniently quick to bung a microphone in the middle of the four of us and uh, test a few things but get it sounding so it was alright enough. So is he going to enter? And does Gilks think he can win again? Uh, not this year, no. no. Um, it's kind of crept up on me. Um, perhaps again though, it's a good competition. The diversity last year was really neat. Online entries close on January the 15th. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. The Lake Hayes A&P show brings the town a little bit closer to the country. It gives the Wakatipu community a closer taste of rural life. And this year's show was the 100th and second time it's been held. These kids braved the cold and rain and came out to watch this magician wow them with his tricks. You name it, they have it. Cars to spare pools to moisturizers, coffee, hot dogs, candy floss, Ferris wheels, magic show and of course the horses. As far as events in, in the Wakarup Basin in, in New Zealand really, you know, AMP shows are probably the longest running events that there are and iconic. by far here, yeah, they are iconic. Maggie Hillock is 61. She has ridden horses and competed for 40 years. As a young girl, she had that instant connection with the horses and horse riding have been in her system ever since. I can go out for a ride on my horse and I come home feeling a million times better. You know, just the old saying, what is it, the inside of the, the outside of a horse is very good for the inside of a man. And it's true of a woman as well. <laughs> Hello, Mina. I'm so in Queenstown. In fact, we're in Aerotown with the Lake Hayes AP show. I'm in the really old bus called the Remarkables Experience. It is about 70 years old, along with my friend Neville. Hi. Who's been uh, taking people uh, from the parking area to the show. And um, the show has begun, and it's wonderful. Another novel thing one would find in the Lake Hayes AMP show are the kids and adults handmade items on display. These funky items were made by kids, put on display in the hope of winning prizes. Mina Amso, The South Today. Cool. The Queenstown Summer Beer Festival will return for a second shout next year after its successful run on Saturday in the resort town. The festival showcases craft beers brewed locally and nationally. Central Otago's Victoria Breweries was just one of 16 brewers showcasing craft beer at the Summer Beer Festival in Queenstown at the weekend. 
Hello, Mina Amso in the heart of Queenstown with the Summer Beer Festival. This one here is my favourite. This is from the Victorian um, one. It's a chilli, so it starts off with a really flavour, and then you get this chilli hit at the end. This is my favourite so far. Big national names were also there, like Garage Project, 8 Wired Brewing and Renaissance, alongside Queenstown's locals like Cargo, Smiths and Altitude Brewing. We have 16 breweries here. 16? 16, yeah. And about eight of them are local, and the rest are from outside of Queenstown. So Auckland and Wellington, Invercargill. Um, so we had guest breweries that we invited, and then obviously we had all the local breweries come along. But as it was not all beer, cider appearing to be a favourite among some of the crowd. The Zephyr Apple Crumble. I really enjoyed it. It's very unique. Uh, so cider is usually quite tart. But the apple crumble from Zephyr has a cinnamon note to it, so it's just, yeah, it's very unique. Zephyr's new apple crumble cider started off as a complete fluke. A one-off batch was made for an Australasian festival. We were bouncing around ideas and came up with the apple crumble concept. That was two weeks before the festival uh, started. And the cider making team quickly um, came up with the concept and developed it into a product. The following week I had probably 200 emails in my inbox asking where to buy it and these were all people who had tried it at Gab so that, that kind of gave, gave us an indication that it was a product that was worth pursuing. Organisers say the festival was a perfect fit for summer and will be back next year. Mina and so the South Today. Oh I do like an IPA. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The NZTA advises that realignment work starts today on a million dollar makeover for Queenstown's infamous roundabout at the resort town's entrance. A Dunedin man with macular degeneration has started a petition calling on the government to establish a working party on pedestrian safety in New Zealand. And a documentary made by the Toitu Otago Settlers Museum takes a closer look at the lives and the provinces of the Chinese gold miners in the 1880s. Time the South Today weather update. In tomorrow's ODT, and welcome, Mr. Somerville. Thank you. We look at the fact that Tauranga is now past Dunedin population, and Dunedin's number five, but uh, plenty of people make the correct comment that it's quality, not quantity. That Too counts. right. So we're still doing well. Uh, NCA results come out tomorrow morning, so there'll be lots of uh, anxious pupils and parents. Um, a story about the treasure hunt. There's benefactors hidden $100 notes around a place in the city, and there's a hide-and-seek uh, thing going on with that. And the Targo country captain on Sunday faced 119 balls without scoring a single run. Not a snick, no nothing. Did you stutter? 119. That's correct. Um, he was trying to save the game. You know, the cricket has all sorts of vagaries and uh, the non-limited overs form, sometimes all sorts of things strange happened and so he was blocking to try to save the game. So you can read tomorrow's paper and find out if he succeeded. 119 has to be a down trail. Thank you so very much Mr Subble for tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. And it's time now for having a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Emu Oil. And we're going to start with today's southern view, a shot looking out over Otago Harbour. Away you go, Steve. Thank you. Right, let's have a look at our situation. A very unsettled week ahead with a strong westerly airflow and cold fronts will target the South Island, bringing strong rain and winds with storms likely for Thursday. The southern outlook for Belclutha, the Catlins, strong nor'westers, late rain in 19. Gore and Lumsden, strong to gale force nor'westers, late rain 17. And around central, we can look for strong nor'westers, late rain in 21. Queenstown, Teyanao and uh, Wanaka, temperatures between 15 and 21 degrees. Uh, fairly unsettled sort of conditions, I do encourage you to take shelter when you can. To the northern outlook, O Oamaru, O Marama, Timaru, gusty nor'westers, high cloud 23, Twizel, gusty nor'westers, late rain in 17. Here in Dunedin tonight, showers will be clearing overnight, fine, a low of 9. Tuesday begins fine but it drops the ball with late rain, mild temperatures but freshening westerlies. And Wednesday, sunny at first but cloudy, 
late, rain, late in developing rain southeasters and rain too. For Thursday brings gale force winds and Invercargill tonight dry and cloudy overnight 9 degrees. Tomorrow cloudy late rain strong nor'westers gale force at times 11 and 17 you can expect. And Wednesday periods of rain around midday southerly freshening more rain too. Thursday brings showers with strong to gale force southwesters 9 and 11. Be careful out there, okay? And that is all from the hard-working men and women of the South today. I am the talking head and torso of Craig's story. Thank you for watching. Good evening. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.